I think there's something wrong with this possum. Yeah. Buddy, I don't know what your problem is. But, uh, you can't stay. Yeah. Well, poop. See, they're getting at them up there, too. Raccoons. Well, this can't continue. There are no deer tracks here. This is raccoons. So, yeah, there we are. Okay. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Well, there's an ugly truth to homesteading that while I try to live, I leave wide margins, uh, I try to live in harmony with the nature on my homestead. There are times when you have to do something different. Uh, today, uh, I've got to trap these coons. You saw the little possum that was sick and just walking around and around and around in circles. He was suffering. Okay? He had, that had to be stopped. So, there are things like that that have to happen on your homestead. You don't have to like them, but they have to happen. Now, what will happen here with the corn is that one year I let the uh, raccoons overpopulate on this homestead and uh, they ate all my corn okay I had about 150 ears per row and four rows and I didn't get any the raccoons got it all I trapped 21 raccoons that year okay when they start hitting your corn you know especially when it's not even ripe yet you know it's time to reduce them so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a have a heart trap. Now, in Kentucky, it is illegal to trap them with a box trap and release them somewhere else. Okay? So, I have to do the other thing. I try and do it as humanely as possible. But, I have to do that. So, let me show you the traps and how they work. Uh, I couldn't find one of my traps. I had loaned it. And I thought I didn't get it back, but I put it somewhere, and that was me, and I found it, finally. Okay. Let me show you. Okay, when I was a kid, these were called a have-a-heart trap. Okay? Now, I've let this one get full of junk, so I'm going to have to open the gate and dump all that out. If I can get it out, probably have to reach my hand up in there and get it. If I can reach that far. Well, I can't reach that far. So I'll have to get it out the hard way, get a stick. I grabbed a little walnut frond so I could push it out. You don't have to get it all out. Just any of it that might impede your trap. It's good enough. Now, the way this works is right here is a pedal, is a, a hook. Right here is a hook. Right there. Can you see it? Yeah, it's right there. And when this is up, that goes up and what happens is when the traps closed that comes down so that the trap can't be open so that the raccoon or possum or whatever you got can't push out of it so push that back pull this up and then I pull it right here like this and that catches on this little hook okay and right here is a metal rod a metal rod that runs down to this pan and when he steps on the pan it releases this okay 
It's a real simple design. There's nothing fancy about it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get it set here. There it is set. Now I'm going to put it over here in the garden. Just put it right there where they are eating corn. Okay? Then I'm going to take a treat for them, marshmallows. Why do I use marshmallows? Well, I use marshmallows because cats don't like them. And most of the time, dog won't go in that trap to look for them. Okay, so you take a marshmallow or two. Back there behind the pan. I put one there, one there. And that will lead them right into that trap. Okay, and when they get in there, I've got them. Uh, I've got another trap over here. I'll show you it. So this trap is a little bit different. Right here. This has been bent to death, okay? Raccoons are tough little creatures, okay? So they have bent this to the point that I'm going to have to to do something. Let's see if I can get this to go through there. There we go. Now, the way it's sitting, I can pull this up, push that back. Pull that up. And this is just a little bitty thing that hooks right here. Let me show you. See, this one is different. It doesn't have a hook. It just has this little thing right here. So when it pulls back, it allows that to come down. But you want to set it so that it's a higher trigger. The minute a, a coon gets back in there, you want it to be where you got him. Okay, it comes down just like the other one. It comes down, this comes forward, it catches right here, and then this comes down to where that can't pull back so the coon can't come out. All right, so I'm gonna get this set here, Put that up. And let me tell you, they will tear these traps all to pieces. I've had to re fix them, repair them more than once. Raccoon is a tough, tough, tough little creature. He's a lot tougher than a possum. Now, any possums that I get, that I catch, I just release them. Because possums aren't doing that to you, corn. Now, I'm going to do exactly what I did. One of the kids tell me, see, we told you we didn't have your trap. Do exactly what I did with the other one. One, if you put it too back, back too far, the raccoon will just reach through. Okay, so you want it to kind of be in the middle where his little hands can't reach it. And then I'll put one here. And now I'll take this and put it in the garden. I'm going to go right on the other side of that corn and put this one. And I will drop one out here in the field. I think I'll put a half of another one. And put the other half on this one. Over there. To help lead them in. And then the other ones for the groundhog. Now that is a part of the ugly truth of homestead. 
Sometimes you're responsible for managing the wildlife on your homestead. Uh, it just has to happen. If that was all the damage they were going to do to the corn, I wouldn't bother with this. But that corn's not nowhere near ripe yet. It's got another month, half month, maybe maybe three three weeks left to ripen up, and they're already starting on it. That means that they will tear this all up in three weeks. That whole field of corn will be gone. So I have to trap them. Now I will tell you right up front that that those traps have caught so far those two traps I've caught 27 raccoons 9 groundhogs and 11 possums the possums may have been duplicates okay but all the others I know were not duplicates because I did what was necessary to raise my garden okay and you'll have to do that on your homestead that's another one of those things there will be blood okay just gonna happen just gonna happen there will be blood and if you're not prepared for that then don't homestead don't do it I swear to goodness don't do it uh, should I reduce the raccoon population in the summer when I can save their pelts yeah but a raccoon pelt isn't worth but a dollar and a quarter okay and then you've got all that skinning and fleshing and now I'm not gonna do that okay I did that as a young man uh, back then it was a it was ten dollars for a raccoon pelt now it's a dollar twenty five so now I'm not gonna do all that now if you like this stuff this homesteading do-it-yourself kind of thing be certain to come on out to the channel and subscribe we do this homestead stuff all the time sometimes once on five videos just depends on what's going on in the homestead that week now if you hit the little bell it'll be right up here when you come to the channel it'll notify you when we upload a video we upload on Sundays Tuesdays and Thursdays now I won't show you the results of the trapping and the reason I won't show you the results of the trapping it all has to do with YouTube's uh, policies and I don't want to I don't want to use go against the policies and get my channel banned so that's just what I have to do but know this I do what's necessary on my homestead just like you'll have to do what's necessary on your homestead whether it's with your livestock or with wildlife you've got to do what's necessary don't wholesale go through and mow stuff down you got to live in harmony with your wildlife I don't want to kill all the raccoons okay I don't want to kill all of them but there's too many if they're doing this they can't find enough food out in the wild so and you know Rocky has been eating my cat food so Rocky's probably gonna get it right here okay I call Rocky the raccoon that eats my cat food I call him Rocky and the other the possum that eats the cat food I call him uh, Henri I don't know why I just do love y'all